The Sustainable Voice, bringing you big successes from small places worldwide. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to Sustainable Voice. This is Ashish. And look who's back. Look who decided to come <laughs> back. Robin, how are you? I'm great. I'm great. Thank you for inviting me back. I appreciate it. <laughs> no, no. You, know, you, you wanted to join. You can't say I you invited. No, I did. You wanted to I, join. Did. I kind of invited myself. You're right. Okay. So <laughs> those of you who have been listening to past episodes, you know Robin's been a past guest of, of the podcast. And whenever she shows up, the agenda pretty much goes out the window because <laughs> we just start talking for a half an hour. And we've actually got some pretty big news about this podcast that she and I are going to share at the end of this episode. So yeah. you're going to have to tolerate us for a half an hour, perhaps even longer <laughs> to get that news. Uh, but how are you? I'm great. I'm yeah, great. It, you know, spring is finally here. And um, even though it's like 35 degrees on May 1 in Kentucky, it's still, you know, technically the warmer weather is coming. The days are longer. The sun is shining. That makes me happy. So well, I got to tell you here, conspiracy theories abound here where I am, because apparently half the state's going to, you know, basically sink. So, oh. so, I mean, if we ever thought about this state floating away, well, conspiracy theories are all abound. It's happening. It's happening. Oh. Get your, you get your ark, get your boat, get your rowboat, speedboat, tugboat, paddleboat, whatever you want. <laughs> and just wait, because it's happening. Well, so there go my plans to move to Florida, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly right. I mean, seriously. I mean, I, I think where I am is now considered the new South Florida, I guess. Hmm, uh, okay. So, well, right. I'll tell you what, we, we've yeah. got a cool topic to talk about today. You, yes. you and I have actually plowed a lot of road together. Yeah. Um, you know, from Colombia, we were in Egypt together. Mm -hmm. Where we got we got some some excitement happening in other parts of Africa right now, mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. and we'll save that story for a later date. But yes. but it's but but it's something really cool because you know you know you and I have a mutual friend. Um, we have a mutual friend who's in Charlotte, and this mm -hmm. mutual friend uh, is just she just got a clean diagnosis of no chemo needed. And mm -hmm. you, you know, with those of you who listen to the pod, past podcast have, have heard us mention her name, so. Um, you know, she got a clean, clean bill for her, for no chemo needed. And mm -hmm. she's approached life as just the way it was, you know, the fact that just full luster for everything. Right. In fact, when she first got diagnosed with what she had, it wasn't, oh my gosh, I've got this illness. It was, I can't travel. That was yeah. her thing. I <laughs> can't travel. It's going to cramp my style. I, right. <laughs> I, I was, it was, and honestly, I, as somebody, you know, in my family, we've dealt with the, this uh, mm. particular type of cancer as well. And yeah. she just, just went at it. And, yeah. and I remember having a conversation with her and that's what spurred the, the inspiration for this episode. I had a conversation with her about her prior career before mm -hmm. she got into yep. travel and love traveling. Yep. And she was talking about how she was delivering medicine, you know, AIDS medicine, other medicine, medicine to the poorest countries in the world. And what came out of her mouth next is what absolutely floored me was the fact that she was getting tired of the bureaucracy and didn't feel like she was making a difference. So, of course, I asked her, I said, you're you're delivering medicine to yeah. to these countries. How are you not? How are you? She goes, no, there's so much red tape. And here we are. Yeah. So she's actually making more of an impact in travel than mm -hmm. she was working in her prior career delivering medicine. So yeah. the the other the first person I thought of right away was you. Was <laughs> I got to ask this question to you because you were like one of the most organized people I've ever met in my entire <laughs> life. And 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 right off the bat, like when I you know you you talk to certain people, there's just a really pragmatic approach to how you do things, and it just it's it, it's really inspirational, it's educational, it's motivational. So you got to tell me, tell our listeners. And, and and before you do, by the way, Robin has a really cool podcast of her own that I've been a member of as well, and Thank one you. that's actually worth paying attention to. So we'll mention that podcast at the end of this as well. But Robin, tell us about tell us about your 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 thing. Okay, well, um, I think you know I'm a little bit of a serial entrepreneur. I, I, mean, I have that. Been, you know, I'm very much an ideas person, you know, um, love to think about things and, oh my gosh, wouldn't this be great? And how could I, you know, get this to work and so on and so forth. So I've had a, you know, a few careers um, and owned a couple of businesses and the, the, the biggest one and the one that took up the most time was over 20 years. And I, uh, built and I mean, not with my own bare hands, obviously, but 
<laughs> I built a kennel, um, a large boarding facility that um, could house up to 60 dogs at a time. I also trained Labrador retrievers um, and did dog, uh, obedience and did some classes, did private training for people. I bred Labrador retrievers, so uh, provided a lot of families with a lot of puppies over the years that brought a lot of happiness and joy. Um, and, you know, various things that went along with that. So that was kind of my first, the biggest, the big business that I owned before I came into the travel business. But I also have a very strong and long equestrian background. I grew up riding horses. I became pretty accomplished at that. And that actually helped me travel around the world. At one point, I went around the world working with horses. And so that allowed me to marry my love of travel and horses together. But the, the kennel business took off when I got married and had kids, because obviously I was going to be home for a while. Being in the travel business at that point in my life was not something that was going to work. My husband had a job that really kept him very, very busy. So, um, so it was, it was a good fit then. And, uh, so that's kind of the, the business that I was in before. Um, and yeah, so. Oh, this is really cool. And actually with the kennels, and you, I remember you telling me about this cause we were actually sitting, we were sitting in the vehicle driving out to Guatape from mm -hmm. Medellin when mm -hmm. we were talking That's about exactly this. right. Yeah. Yep. Yep. And you were talking about this kennel business. And like I told you guys, we've actually plotted a lot of road together. I, I yeah. mentioned this to you to all my listeners. So, I mean, this is, I'm proving it right now. Yeah. <laughs> you talked about rescue dogs as well, right? You talked yeah. about some of that. Can you talk a little bit about that? And, and I tell you why, because one of the first things that I admired about you from the, from the minute we started talking was the fact that everything you were doing had a completion to it, meaning that it was with you was never about a transaction. It was always right. about something that brought things full circle. Right. Um, and, and you just did it just now with horses and then the kennel. Right. But you you talked to me about rescue dogs at that yeah. point as well. I, I, and if you want to share that part of it. Well, I think I think you're thinking of one dog in particular because I didn't really specialize in rescue, so to speak. Right. I did I did work with the breed rescue. So right. like when you're a member of a breed club, which I was of the Labradors, you know you you do take some responsibility for helping, you know, when there's abandoned breeds of the same kind and things right. like that. So I did some work there, but um, you know, not like humane society kind of thing. Right. Yeah, no, not that. I remember yeah. this is exactly right. So right. I think what you're thinking of in particular is the the dog, the the only dog that we have left right now. We've always had multiple dogs. We've always had Labrador retrievers in our lives. And this is the first time we've ever been without one. Right now we have an old German Shepherd, a long haired German Shepherd, which doesn't fit the mix at all. But um, but he used to come to the kennel pretty regularly. The people had rescued him mm -hmm. from in their neighborhood. He was kind of running loose. The owners weren't taking care of him. They just sort of took him in, um, took him to the vet, had him neutered, taken care of, all that. And then they every time they'd travel, they'd bring him to the kennel. And I was just saying how much I loved him, how lovely he was, blah, 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 blah. And they were like, well, we really need to find a home for him. And I don't know what happened. The next thing I know, we have a German Shepherd. <laughs> <laughs> Look, as somebody who grew up with German Shepherds, uh, I grew up with them. I yeah. love these dogs. I, yeah. I'll even share with you that my my kids in their over overachieving imagination uh -huh. put together a PowerPoint where they wanted us to get a ah, German Shepherd. I like that. Name the German Shepherd Delta. Did the mathematics uh -huh. on the on, on the carrying cost of uh -huh. it and oh. of, of her, Impressive. and Impressive. and and even found the breeding area for. Okay. It. You know what? I I, I wish I wish you had been a fly in the room. Oh, or actually, been in yeah. the room. Because you would have that. seen this, and, and I mean, it was it was impressive. You could tell, and I I literally said I gave you an, I give you an A for effort and F for reality. Yeah. Uh, so <laughs> I was like, well, let's 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 think about this for a second. You know, I travel way too much to have a dog yeah. at home, even though I love German Shepherds more yeah. than anything. Those are my yeah. favorite dogs. Yeah. So now, see again, you're talking about this as well. But but this, you know, in your last business, because we spent a lot of bit a lot, a lot about conservation, and and of course, you know, this series is about big successes in small mm -hmm. places, and sometimes that big success isn't always with a conservationist mm -hmm. or a, a biologist or mm -hmm. somebody with a PhD. PhD or, 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 or a hero that's a known that's a known entity. Yep. Sometimes it's the little things that people do out of the limelight. Yep. So we talked about this as well. You know, you've when did you start getting introduced 
to the notion of conservation before you enter the travel and just you know j- just being able to to be in the service of others when wh- yeah. where did that show up in your life oh definitely when i had my kids mm-hmm. you know because i think that you know, up until then, I probably really didn't think about it that much. I mean, you know, ugh, I hate to admit it, but, you know, probably the world revolved around me a lot mm. until I had my kids. And, mm. you know, I didn't think about a lot of the things about uh, in terms of what I was going to be leaving behind. You know, I wasn't right. there wasn't a legacy sort of at that point. And then once I had my kids, it was like, OK, what are we doing, you know, with our lives, to our planet, for our children, for, you know, the family, whatever. I mean, you can apply it in so many ways. So I, that's absolutely the time you when take, I kind of woke up. Well, can you, know. you take us to that exact moment when that started hitting you? What, what was happening? <laughs> Don't say you were giving birth. So no no, 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 no. I'll tell you. Oh my gosh. I can't believe that. Okay. This is I'll tell you exactly what it was. <laughs> so my youngest one is um, very curious. And I was in the other room with some clients that were picking up their dog, talking to them. And he comes out of the grooming room of the kennel, literally foaming at the mouth and screaming and crying. <laughs> oh, yeah. Wow. And I'm like, you know, like, oh my gosh, like, and if you're watching this on video right now and you see my face, like I I was just completely freaked out. Well, he had gotten into the dog shampoo and like, had he eaten it or drank it or whatever? I don't know. Mm -hmm. Smeared it in his mouth. And uh, I mean, he was in agony and um, gave whole new meaning to wash your mouth out with soap. So what do I, I mean, the first thing I'm like standing there just complete, like, what do I do? Fortunately, the people I was there with said, call poison control. I'm like, good idea. So you know, <laughs> That's what I did. They're like, it's fine. It's just shampoo, read us the ingredients, whatever, blah, blah, blah. as long as it's not like, you know, flea and tick killer or, you know, whatever. And it wasn't. And, and so it's fine. You know, you just like, <laughs> gonna keep getting them to rinse, spit, rinse, spit, rinse, spit until, you know, they stop soaping. Sensing. So, yes, rabies. Got yeah, it. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, but that really made me think. I was like, what if that had been poisonous? Right. And if it is poisonous, why am I putting it on my dogs or keeping it around my children or what? You know, they always tell you to lock the cabinet beneath the sink right. if you're going to put, you know, drain cleaner in there or whatever. But I don't know. It just made me really, really start to think about that more. So, See, that was it. That was that's nice. actually that's actually pretty hilarious because I got a visual image actually <laughs> of which is out of curiosity. What did the clients think when they saw this kid foaming at the mouth? Did they actually they still were, get the dog? They were so awesome. I was so glad they were there because okay. otherwise I probably would have like thrown him in the car and taken him to the emergency room or something <laughs> like that. <laughs> My and kids were, got rabies. You know, yeah, they were just totally calm, cool, and collected about it. And they're like, just call poison control. Well, <laughs> I mean, that's I, like I, I, I know we have a lot of parents who listen to this podcast. Yeah. So for those of you parents, mm-hmm. if your kids show up foaming at the mouth, <laughs> moral of the story, call don't poison. call poison control, call Robin. That's <laughs> no, the moral call, story. No. no, call poison control. <laughs> Wait, uh, this, is, this is cool because you know what? That, that, that friend I was telling you about, so hers was a school in Tanzania where she just felt helpless. Mm-hmm. I guess a student there had died while she was there and she just felt helpless and said there's got to be more mm-hmm. that you can do and, and it's ironic because again again I thought of you right away just because some you know my story is very similar right when you start thinking about conservation and whatnot it's some of the most obscure things just leads you down that path I'm, I'm going to get into how you got into travel mm-hmm. but I, I want to I want to just think about that for a second because for those of you listening just just think about what Robin just said right so it took Basically, her looking at the ingredients of the shampoo to realize that I have a responsibility. Mm-hmm. And that's what this podcast is about. It's about mm-hmm. having a responsibility, a higher purpose, a social responsibility. I'm not going to get higher, high, you know, high and mighty on anybody here. I'm just simply yeah. talking about the fact that, you know, it's the simplest things. If we're just simply aware of what's happening around us yeah, to be able to take attention. some. Yeah, yeah that's attention. it. That's it. Yeah. That's that. That's exactly just pay attention because the signs are everywhere. Mm-hmm. Right. I mean, whether it's whether it's weather and climate, whether it's any other thing, poverty, whatnot, the signs are everywhere. Yeah. My, la- my last podcast, I talked to you, to our listeners about my uncle in Sudan. 
Yeah. And the fact that he actually, yesterday morning, he became a refugee. He basically left everything he owned, uh, money, house, everything, left all of it, and took a 13-hour bus ride across the border. No. So as of this morning, he's officially a refugee with nothing wow. to do him and his, him and his wife. His, my, my cousins are in India, and now he's waiting for, he's at a, at a shelter, in, I believe, in Djibouti. We don't know yet. Mm-hmm. We, we lost touch the minute he left. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, and me, we may come in again, but one of the things that he talked to my parents about was that he said, look, you know, this, he, he said something funny. He said, I have paid my rent for my place a month in advance. And I just said, why? Mm-hmm. He said, because when I come back, I don't want to owe anybody anything. Oh my gosh. Only, wow. Only a person who's aware of their yeah. surroundings, who's, as you said, paying attention. Yeah. would say that. And yeah. it's the same thing what you just said, just simply looking at a shampoo bottle and yeah. saying, let's yeah. pay attention. And then I, I, that that has gone to something so, so much further and deeper. We, you know, the conversations we've had, we've planted red, you know, red mangroves together mm-hmm. in Colombia. We've talked about women's rights together in Egypt. We, mm-hmm. We've acted, you know, we've talked about conservation of animals in East Africa and other parts mm-hmm. of Africa as well. I mean, there's so many different elements to, to, to what's happening here, which is really special and really key. Yeah. Um, but all it took was reading a shampoo ball and, and a kid foaming at the mouth. Um, <laughs> but but all, it took, all it took was that. So, yeah. all right. So now here's another question for you, Robin. Mm-hmm. I, and actually, well, I'll tell you what, before I ask that, I'm going to share my moment with you because uh, my background is in finance and economics, right? Which right. is probably one of the least sustainable models out there in terms okay. of, you know, it, that, that when I was working there, it was kind of a notion of, and, and I'm not saying it's everybody. I'm not, I'm, I'm not going to make a blanket statement, but, but the people I worked with was, all right, I got mine. <laughs> what else? That's right, it. Right. You know, so if you, if you, you know, for me, it was, I, I, I want to say I was sitting in Arizona. Um, I was just, you know, I was hiking Camelback Mountain, going up and coming down and whatnot. And I started looking at the airport and I saw how much smog was just sitting over the airport. Yeah. And somebody came and goes, well, that's a dust cloud because we're in the desert. I just looked around and I said, Look, even I know that's not right. <laughs> even I know that's not mm-hmm. right. Mm-hmm. And it was from there. And then I started playing it backwards to my father telling me stories about how he tried to get people to quit, quit smoking safaris. Now, he was a smoker himself. So it wasn't about getting people to quit smoking because he he was on this kick about getting, getting people to drop nicotine. Right, no, right. quite the opposite. He was smoking a pack and a half a day. Yeah. It was more so about the nicotine butts that were on the ground because people right. were chucking them on the ground and the brush fires that start from it and the yeah. animals, the animal day endangerment that happened because of it. Yeah. So he was thinking, he, he's again, your words, he was paying attention. Mm-hmm. And I think mm-hmm. that was that was key. So so all of us seem to have this. And if, it, you know, and if you take back every single hero that we have talked about in this podcast, whether it is somebody in the Ebola Conservancy in Kenya, whether it's the mangroves in, in, in Colombia, whether it's the transformation in Medellin, whether it's the women in Egypt, all of them are doing what Robin just said. They're, they were paying attention to their surroundings and knowing when, when a change needed to happen and what that change needed to be. Yeah. And they represented it, right? So Robin, here's the question for you then. The same thing that I asked our mutual friend. Why did you leave? You had a successful business in the cows. Mm-hmm. Why did you leave? You mm-hmm. married your, your love of horses. You married mm-hmm. your love of travel. Mm-hmm. What, why? What, what drove you into it? Okay. Well, so, well, first, the horse thing I stopped because um, I just, working outside in the winters just got to me. That was, mm-hmm. that was you know, and it, that's a very tough physical job. Um, you know, I was definitely getting to the point where I was getting a little too, you know, old to be doing what I was as much the kind of writing I was doing, let's say that, sure. you know, um, sure. and then, you know, getting married and wanting to have children and all that. So the, the writing was on the wall there. I had started training dogs, really liked it and all of that. So that led one thing led to another, that business was born and it was great for all that time. Then, um, you know, I, I was not getting the same satisfaction out of it that I was at the beginning. And one thing I saw happening was, and, you know, I think this is consistent with a lot of other things uh, that have happened um, as our um, technology and stuff has improved and our attention spans are shorter Mm -hmm. and shorter and shorter (laughs) is that I was noticing that people were like bringing their dogs to me to be trained, but they didn't want to do the work on learning, learning how to use the training. They wanted to bring the dog, drop the dog off and pick up a different dog. What? 
Well, no, I mean, not like literally a different dog. I mean, oh. like, <laughs> no, I right. mean, they literally, what they wanted was they wanted to drop off their sweet, whoever fluffy and pick up a sweet, well-behaved trained fluffy that read their mind. Right. And that's just not possible. <laughs> that's just, you know, yeah. they just didn't want to come and spend the time and learn the commands, how, if, how if, to if, make if. the dog mind, how to do all. And I noticed, I mean, I really noticed a distinct change over the years in right. people's attitudes about this, which I find if, interesting. So if only Elon Musk had been around back then, I mean, right. he's, he's working on mind reading. So yeah. for those of you yeah. dog owners, he's working yeah. on it. No, I'm just yeah. kidding. Go ahead. Go ahead. So, <laughs> so anyway, um, so, you know, it just was kind of losing its luster that way. Um, and my husband retired from his job. My youngest went off to college. Uh, my oldest was already off at college. We were downsizing our house. Um, you know, so really it was time. It was just time. It was a natural time to make a change. I had brought on a partner already there at that business and partners and they were a married couple and they were just taking it and running with it and they were making some really good new changes and you know kind of bringing a fresh perspective new blood all of that into it so it made sense to sell it to them and um i then um went on a trip to kenya i took a group with me on a horseback safari and I had sort of dabbled on the side a little bit in the travel stuff with with a friend and um, did that. And I came home and I said, man, that's that is definitely what I want to do. Like, I uh, really this is this is this is it. This is what I want to do, like for until I retire for the last time. And so. Um, so, yeah, so that's that's what got it was kind of that that whole that horseback safari it was the love of the horses it was being in kenya for the first time it was the the travel and the planning because i had a group of people with me it was the the fact that in travel you have problem solving as well as like helping people get something that they don't know how to get right. without you you know so right. so yeah so that's that's what they that's do. that yeah and, and and since i've met you everything you do focuses on trying to make a positive impact where mm -hmm. where, where people go which i think is you know it, it's yeah. it's it's my personal credo it's yours obviously yeah um and, and i'll tell you you know it's funny i'm listening to your story about just just like okay it's time and you, there's something just clicked so mm -hmm. i i'll tell you i've been an amateur photographer for as long as i can remember mm -hmm. i love cameras um mm -hmm. Pretty much anything technology related. Right, um, right. No stereotypes. Um, and and, <laughs> and, and I, I, I love loved cameras. I have you know a bunch of cameras, bunch of lenses, bunch of bodies, and not. And, and it's never been photographs of you know weddings and whatnot. It's always been nature. It's always been outside. Mm -hmm. I'm the guy who's taking photos every thirty seconds of the sun setting over over a particular point and wherever that is, and just being able to bring out the color separations and everything else, and looking at the moment and seeing things that the naked eye doesn't see. Um, you know, for example, zooming on the spots at the end of a lion's nose yeah. uh, and, and living to tell about it, um, yeah. you know, and, and, and talking to a, to a Maasai friend of mine who's telling me how his grandparents taught him how they tell the age of a lioness by looking at the spots in the nose. Whether it's factually true or not yeah. is irrelevant. Yeah. The fact yeah. is that it's, it's a system that's used by a local community and that fact right. that my camera picked that up. Mm -hmm. So uh, I was, uh, I told, as I mentioned, I was in finance and economics and yeah. I had you know, and I was, I didn't want to get in travel, but I was like, you know what, let me, let's just see. So I ended up going to India mm -hmm. of all places. And I ended up in Ranta. <laughs> Some Warnastro. place you knew no, nothing about. Yeah, it. nothing about, <laughs> absolutely nothing about. So at the time I'd gotten into Ranta Moore National Park. It had just really started, it not, not like it is today. It was just starting to get developed. And, and just before I left, I remember I, I saw this video. Uh, it was a documentary of a tiger, and it was it was a phenomenon, a nature phenomenon. A tiger had actually come in and uh, made a kill right by right by the the water, and mm -hmm. a crocodile had come out and taken the kill into the water, okay. taken the kill away from the tiger. Mm -hmm. Now I've been on safari since I was four years old, mm -hmm. and I've been in, in with animals since I was four years old. Right, uh, born and raised in Kenya, so which means I grew up in the jungle. Yeah, not really, yeah. but yes. Yeah, well, uh, close enough, and and. <laughs> What happened next is something I have never seen in my entire life. This is in the documentary. Okay. The tiger went into the water after the crocodile. Oh, interesting. Went into the water, submerged itself. Wow. Came out with the kill. Head up, kill in the air, and just got out. 
And it was, I mean, and, and it wasn't walking wow. on the on the terra firma beyond the water. It was yeah. actually swimming. Wow. And, and and came and it was it was a large large tiger yeah. obviously. wow that's impressive and it was uh, impre- exactly and so I, I said this is incredible so of course I get to this lake and I'm like this looks familiar and I go I've seen this area before there's a gentleman in the vehicle next to me he must have been no taller than five foot six five foot seven you know mustache mm-hmm. you know Indiana Jones hat everything big mm-hmm. you know mm-hmm. the, the belt buckle the, the whole whip? The whip. Oh no, I didn't have the whip, but I mean, he had, <laughs> I, I mean, he it was the only thing missing. I mean, everything else that he either could have been either the next Indiana Jones or a Bond villain. I couldn't okay, tell the difference. Right, I couldn't okay, tell which okay. one it was. Yeah, yeah. And he had this camera that with the lens went on for miles. It went on, it was like literally, it was like, you know, those cartoons you see of like Roadrunner and yeah, yeah, Wiley Coyote. Yeah, yeah, and it's like this yeah. lens just do, yeah. do, do, yeah, that's yeah. what it was. Yeah. And I remember looking at this lens, just going, This is cool, so cool. So I, I sat down to talk to him about his camera. Uh-huh. I, I he was photographing the the the, the water and whatnot. Uh-huh. I wanted to talk about his camera. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then wow. he's like, Well, I use it because I, I do, you know, I do documentary work for BBC. Yeah. I go, oh, interesting. What okay. do you mean? Okay. I go, tell me more. He goes, well, you know, I do, I, I've been here doing research for tigers for the last uh, two years. I said, mm-hmm. oh, you've been stationed here? He goes, yeah. So then I asked, I said, so just out of curiosity, what's the coolest thing you filmed? And then he proceeds to tell me that the documentary that I saw with the tiger going in the water, mm-hmm. he was the videographer. Oh, he was the one who yeah. took all the photos, all wow. the video, and documented that whole exchange yeah. with the crocodile uh-huh. and proceeds to show me the B roll of oh, everything wow. that he did, the stuff that did not air. Yeah. At that point, like your son, I was foaming at the mouth. Yeah. <laughs> I was I was in. I was like, you know what? That's it. This yeah. is fulfilling. Yeah. And, and I literally came back and I said, let me get this straight. I can travel like this and make a difference in the world because yeah. he was actually involved with, it, with an organization yeah. called, you know, called Project Tiger, which is a conservation project, which okay. in India, you know, it's, it's been a, 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 one of our podcasts later on, we're going to be talking about this, but it's a constant struggle in the fact that there are coal mines so close to some of the tiger reserves and it's mm-hmm. the conservation efforts in India are, are, are not consistent, right? It's not across the board. So right. he was one of the pioneers of conservation work in a country where honestly, conservation was not really a priority the way it is today, you know? I mean, right. today it's becoming a much more focused and and deliberate conversation than it was yet, you know, yesteryear. Yeah. Um, and 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 so he was started talking about this, and we started talking about this. I think it was two three o'clock in the morning mm-hmm. that we were up until talking to, and it was just. And I remember I came back, and I remember my father asked me, he goes, "So what happened?" I go, "I'm not quite sure." <laughs> I wanted to ask about a camera. I'm not quite yeah. sure what happened. Yeah, yeah exactly. I, I, but, but now was, I want to be. But now I want to be in the travel business. So yeah, now I want to be yeah. in this. I want to travel. I want to go. I want to be in this, and I want to go around the world, and I want to do this and yeah. whatnot. And yeah. I know I said I don't want to do it before, but now I do because because of this, and yeah. it just spawned from there. And then, like what you said, it, I started then thinking. Wait a second. If I'm traveling the world, if I'm in this business like you are. And if I'm going to be able to influence people's opinions on what they could do, or as you said, be able to obtain things that you can't get on your own, that those really cool experiences, mm-hmm. then that means I also have the power and the influence uh, to be able, and the voice to be able to, to say something about conservation, to right. say something about, about responsibly doing it and, and, yep. and, and, and the challenges, just, just, as, just as you are. So, all right, so here's the question for you. Mm-hmm. Your very first trip. The mm-hmm. very first trip that that ha- was it a complete disaster or how did it go and what happened? The very first oh, trip. The period. one that I just mentioned, the the horse. The very car? first one. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, it was the weather was atrocious. Oh <laughs> we had a very unseasonal rains in January. Oof, I mean, okay. it was like deluge after deluge after Oof. deluge like every night and we were um we were mobile camping yeah yeah oh lovely so that was a little bit of a mm-hmm. deal breaker and one person did get slightly injured not terribly oh. and oh okay. not by any animal or anything like that from a fall falling off the horse okay. and um so we had to make some adjustments for that so there were there were challenges you know it didn't sure. it wasn't like i came home and said oh i want to do this after a trip that went just swimmingly perfect right. you know there right. were there were some things and um you know and i think that's a really important thing to remember is that there are like almost no trips that just go 100 percent perfect right right there's, there's, there's <laughs> you know turns. i mean there's just stuff i mean when you travel stuff happens and that's stuff, all exactly. there is that, that's just all there is to it but right. um but yeah so i mean at least i went into it 
knowing like not with rose colored glasses on right right no and this this is i think is is really key because you mentioned something pretty pretty important here right so because even mine the first one wasn't smooth right it was but you learned but what I say is the power of responsible because on a horseback safari, that is a responsible form of travel, right? You're mm-hmm. not sitting in a Jeep and just cutting down mm-hmm. treks and surrounding right. 50 vehicles yeah. around one animal. Yep. You're trying to do it responsibly with a softer yep. touch with, you know, yep. where, where you're blending in more and more, which, which mm-hmm. isn't great. Now I would have joined you except the fact that I'm allergic to horses. So yeah, that I would have probably that might've been a problem. <laughs> might've been just a little bit of an issue, just a little bit. I would have walked, I would have walked yeah, behind you. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but, but, but yeah, even the first one for me was that, but, you know, I think, w- and I was saying this to somebody the other day, you know, when you think about the resilience that we have and the commitment to being socially responsible, which is, you know, why we're on this podcast mm-hmm. right now mm-hmm. and, and this conversation and the resilience we have to it, it means no matter how many left turns this takes, yeah, it's like your North Star is clear. I was just literally talking to one of my son's friends yesterday about North Star. Mm-hmm. And we had a great conversation about what it means. The fact that your body goes into conflict if you violate that North Star. And I'm not right. talking about religious principles or moral, but I'm talking about a North Star where you start figuring out your higher purpose. And, and I think that's what I see is that through all the turns, and we've had a few of those turns together, mm-hmm. but through all those turns, that it doesn't waver because that North Star is present the whole time and your body starts to give, like if, if we start doing something that we know is going to hurt that community, our, both of us would go into conflict right away with ourselves. Like, no, this we know this is not right. Mm-hmm. You know, to the same degree as knowing that drinking under the influence is not right or, or doing illicit drugs is not right, right or right. whatever the case may be. There's something in your body that just says, no, this is no, this is not okay. This is what we have to do. This is where it belongs. And, you know, I think, I think that's, to me, I think that's so powerful because there are countless ways, I guess, sort of like medical school, I guess, or any other ones, (laughs) there are countless ways where you go through enough left turns and when you go, I've had enough. Yeah. Yeah. And that doesn't seem to happen here. We seem to have a thirst to do more every single time. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think that, I think that's, very true of you know of of us and the people that we surround ourselves with because right. we, you know we're pretty like-minded and we and the kind of travel that your company does is you know g- engineered geared toward and for those reasons and it's definitely the kind of thing that attracts me uh, toward you know the kind of travel that I plan and right. I'll say too that I think that by one of the things that I think we do as a service is we help people to see other parts of the world and other ways of living mm-hmm. and understand even at a much bigger picture about why conservation is so important. I mean, right. I, I think that, yeah, the documentaries and all that are great. Awesome. You need them. Absolutely. Right. Right. Um, but there is just something about seeing it with your own eyes, meeting the people that are affected by all of this. I mean, if you, you know, you could take the turn into climate change and all of that. I mean, when you go to countries that, you know, you know, I mean, I don't want to like go down that road, but I'm just saying that, um, you know, you, once, once you see that, uh, like, and live it and breathe it, smell it, right. You're around these people and you meet them. I mean, on my most recent trip to Kenya, which was just a month ago or so, I mean, there's somebody that I had met on um, a pre- on that very you know first trip, um, who has a child that between then and now died of malaria. Right. You know, right. and I, I mean that's just not, I mean where we live and the way we live and all that stuff. Right. I don't think about stuff like that. No. You know. So no. I think that when saying sorry, I'm getting a little long. No, way, it's this but, is great. Uh, this is this is exactly. But, like, I, I'm aligned uh, completely with this. Yeah. So when we can help people plan their travels in a way that opens their eyes and helps them understand um, more of these things and how travel can actually be a positive Mm -hmm. for, you know, helping open those doors. I think that's um, to me, that is really rewarding. Yeah. Look, and I, and I think that's, that's exactly right. And, And it's there. So, and we've seen some pretty crazy things 
in the you know and we how many years have we known each other now this has been what's going on it's four? been like a couple of years yeah i think it's almost going on four now it was three it's so it's it's i feel like no, I've known it's you not for that 20. long it's, it's not, not? That long. no right, well, it feels it yeah, feels no. like it's been 20 years and that's in a good way that is you know a mean good that no you're way. absolutely right because we're like you know pick up a conversation and uh yeah and then all of a sudden we look at the clock and it's like oh i need, oh. I need oh. to go do something <laughs> yeah i need to go do something productive wait hold on yeah. no but you know what i i so, so i had somebody who listens to this podcast who stopped me and basically came and and, and it was so funny right so uh, i was with my children i was with my wife and somebody came we were somewhere and came and said I listen to your podcast. Can I get your autograph? I'm like, whoa, whoa, whoa. What? Hold on a second. What do you mean? <laughs> like, wait a second. This is nothing. So I played a really cool trick for my kids. I We have an Alexa device at home. Uh -huh. and, and I know Jeff Bezos does not stand for what we stand for, however. Right, right. Uh, and, and not getting political, just simply saying that. But right. it's a cool trick. I started playing up this podcast on Alexa. I'm like, hey, watch this. I started playing it up at home. And all of a sudden, like, hey, look, dad's got a cool trick. And so it, 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 it showed like, hey, hey, Alexa, play sustainable voice. And all of a sudden, my voice shows up. Oh, and I played funny. the episode you and I were on. Oh, I really? Us. Yeah, yeah. And so my yeah. kids go, my, my daughter was 11 goes, how'd you get an Alexa? And I go, that's all I did. That's all I did. <laughs> so, you know, for, for us, oh, I love funny. having these conversations just yeah. because of the fact that this podcast isn't about politics. Yeah. This podcast isn't about trying to convince anybody of anything. This is about just getting you to think, yeah. getting you as a listener to just mm -hmm. think. It's it's it, it, to, to to form your own conclusions, whatever they may be. We are to good pay with attention. whatever conclusion to, to pay, pay attention. attention. The best words you've said to pay attention to what's happening yeah. because you never know what kind of message you're going to get from what's around you. Whether it's a shampoo bottle, whether it's a cigarette butt, whether it's a whether it's a, a camera, whatever the case may be. But there's something always happening around you that you got to pay attention to. And that actually brings me to a really cool announcement that Robin yeah. and I have to make yeah. about this podcast. It's one that probably should have happened sooner, but I'm glad it's finally happening. Yep. Yep. So Robin and I, we're going to be on this podcast once a month. Yeah. And, and it's going to be nothing to do with topics. It's going to be something completely off the wall. Robin, you want to share what we decided what we're going we're to call it? Uh, well, I, I don't think we really, the we first, out, the first, we? The, well, the first time that we're going to do this together, we're going to, we're going to talk about what you shouldn't worry about That's right. That's when right. you travel. Yes. And, and, and I love, I shouldn't worry about it. <laughs> well, no, and clearly we're not worrying about it as you yeah. can tell, yeah. but, but it is, it's what you shouldn't worry about. And yeah. you see, you, you know, don't freak out what you shouldn't freak out about, yeah. right. What you yeah. shouldn't worry about. And I think that's the key because, you know, we all see what's happening in the world. We all see the news, whether what and what, by whatever means and whatever channels and whatever whatever bias you follow it doesn't matter, right? Yeah. You, you all see what's happening, right? And I and and, and to, to to say like this is this is something that has just gone absolutely crazy. I mean, again, we talked about my uncle in Sudan. Like this is this is where we are. For for me, for my family, this is a repetition. For my wife's family, it's a repetition because her family, the same thing happened when they left Uganda when Idi Amin was there. Yeah. So it's like here here we are, round two. Yeah. You know, and, and you see what's happening. And, and, and what Robin said about paying attention, I would only say if anybody listening to this podcast is either connected to or affiliated with or knows any of our global leaders, I have only one thing to say to them. Pay attention. Yeah. Just pay attention. Mm -hmm. I don't care what your politics are. Mm -hmm. I don't Absolutely. care what you believe or don't believe in. Yeah. Just yeah. pay attention. You know, that makes me think about, we have a, a mutual friend who wrote a book yep. called Attention Pays. That's right. And that's right. And that's a very good book. It's, it, and I, and I, I love reading it because mm -hmm. that was, that's exactly what it's about. Mm -hmm. Could you imagine if we just paid attention, mm -hmm. would we still make the same decisions we make? Yeah. So I also, I, I, the things that I believe in, and I know you believe in this, that we are capable of so much more than what we've achieved. Oh, We're absolutely. capable yeah. of, of so much more. One of the famous quotes Nelson Mandela said, and he's, it's, it's been shown in the movie, but I remember even also seeing this when he first got out of prison and, and just studying it. Um, and, and one of the things he talked about was exceeding our own expectations. Mm -hmm. you know, now that gets glorified in, that, in, in, in the movie, in a movie, in the movie of Invictus, but beyond that, 
if you start thinking about his way of thought, um, there's a great interview. And, and of course, his book, he talks about exceeding our own expectations. Yeah. How do we exceed yeah. our own expectations if we don't pay attention? So right. that that's why I think us talking once a month about things you shouldn't freak out about. Yeah. It's not about telling you to not worry about what's happening. It's not about telling you, hey, you know what? Just ignore what's happening. No, of course not. What we're simply telling you is before you freak out about what you're seeing or hearing or reading in, in current events, before you freak out, think about your own expectations. Yeah. Think yeah. about how you can exceed your own expectations because I guarantee you it's infectious. No yeah. pun intended. Uh, <laughs> it's, it's, it's infectious. If yeah. you can exceed your own expectations, the person next to you will exceed theirs. The person next to them will exceed theirs. The person next to them will exceed theirs and so on and so on and so on and so on. That's Absolutely. the beauty of it, right? I agree 100%. Yes. Yeah. yes. I mean, the testament to the fact is the fact that you and I were in two places where because they exceeded their own expectations, tourism exists, Egypt and That's Colombia. That's a very good point. Very, I mean, very good point. Yes. And, and, yeah. and we, you and I have traveled extensively yeah. through Africa. We've yeah. traveled extensively through parts of Latin America. Yeah. Colombia, Rwanda, Uganda should not have tourism, yet yeah. they do. Yeah. I, I firmly believe that one day in my lifetime, Sudan will have tourism too, yeah. Yeah. right? They, because of what's what's there. Yeah. But before that could happen, we have to exceed our expectations. Right. Think, think about that, that moment where you read that shampoo bottle mm -hmm. and you wanted more. At that very minute, you exceeded your own expectations because you, who would have thought to read the shampoo bottle? All of a sudden, you looked at that and said, I want more. Yeah. I, 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 I want to do more. Yeah. I, for me, was a photographer. Yeah, I went beyond the camera. I exceeded my own expectations, and now here we are having this conversation. Yeah, yeah, right. Exactly. I think it's huge. It's yeah. huge. It is. So we're going to record that first things you shouldn't freak out about yep. at the end of this month. Yeah. Uh, ironically, we're going to do it the day before I leave for Colombia. Oh. Okay. <laughs> so, so we'll do it then. The thirtieth of May, we're going to record it then, and it's going to be it's going to be absolutely awesome. But I, I and we're going to do it once a month. I can't think of a better person to record that that episode than with you. Oh, that will be fun. It'll, it'll make be me, fun. I might I might cry though that I'm not going. I'm gonna be like, it might be a little emotional for me. <laughs> things that make maybe change the things that make you jealous. How yeah, about right. that? <laughs> you know, that, that, that definitely will. But you know what? I'm gonna take the, the the I'm gonna look at it through. I've been to Columbia three times. There you go. And I can't wait to go back, but that's three more times than most people have ever that's gotten right. to go. So, that's right. And, and, and the yeah. people who are sitting up saying, no, 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 I don't want to go. I, I get asked all the time. Is it safe? Are you kidding yeah. me? Yeah. Is, 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 are we safe here? Yeah. I mean, define, define your word safe. I remember uh, I went para paragliding one year. And, yeah. and I guess I go paragliding in Colombia all the time in Medina. And somebody with me is saying, is it safe? And I remember I looked around and said, it's regulated. No, but is it safe? throwing you off a cliff with a parachute on your back. I mean, define safe. It's just like paragliding in California. Right. Define safe. <laughs> yeah, like, right. I mean, or, I, uh, you know, wherever else in the world you might go. It's right. You know, right. It's paragliding. Right. I mean, are you defined? You might double laws? check your insurance policy. You know, That's make right. sure you're That's good. Right. <laughs> make sure you're good. Make sure you're good. Are you defined the laws of gravity? Yes. Yeah. Are you doing yeah. things the human body probably shouldn't be doing? Yes. Yeah. But is it worthwhile? Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, uh, oh, yeah. Yeah. Robin, so. it has been an absolute blast, a pleasure. I can't Thank wait to you. start these monthly podcasts with you. Uh, I can't wait to plow more road with you. Uh, <laughs> this is this, we're, we're going to have so much fun yeah. because we get, we, you know, we, we see things the same way. You, me, there's a couple of people that travel us together. We all see the world the same way. And, this, and none of it's political, yeah. right? I mean, I think between all four of us, each of us sits on different sides of political spectrum, which yeah. is okay. Yeah. But yet we come together for like-minded ideologies based on paying attention That's to what's around exactly us. Right. Exactly right. Exactly right. Yeah. I love it. I love it. I'm stealing that phrase, by the way, for future episodes. Well, attention. I think you're going to have to talk to Neen first. I think she's uh, the one who actually came fine. up with it before. I think I stole it from her. Did she trademark it? Otherwise, I can probably I don't use know. it. We might have All to, right. we might hey, have to Neen, check with her on that. <laughs> Hey, Neem, if you're listening, don't tell your attorney we're, we're using the phrase, okay? <laughs> Till next time, guys. Enjoy. Stay well. Thank you for listening to The Sustainable Voice. If you have a success story of your own, please reach out and share it with us. We'd love to hear from you. See you next time.